Hi there, this is your favorite non-Indian math channel and in this video I'm going to introduce you what is gamma function, how it's defined, when it's defined and the main three properties. So basically the first and second is saying the same thing and the third one we are not we are going to prove the first one second is following from that the third one would require the canonical form which is like the infinite product of it and i don't think it's good for introductory so i will only give the expression for the third one okay but it's also important so let's prove the first one okay so the definition says that the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus t t to the z minus 1 is defined for any complex number and the main idea behind this gamma function is that it's generalized factorial okay here we define factorials only for positive integers and with with help of gamma function we can define it for any complex number except for these points 0 minus 1 minus 2 they're not it's not defined here okay on these points so let's see what we can do i'm going to prove the first property so i'm writing gamma of n plus 1 so i'm going to use use the definition and then in the end i'm going to say okay yeah it's indeed n factorial so gamma of n plus 1 is going to be equal to so instead of z i'm going to put m plus 1 from 0 to infinity e to the minus t t to the n so how can i do this integral of course integration by parts and we are going to use tabular method which makes this integral much simpler normally you you it would be it would take a lot with the uv method okay uh, so of course i'm going to take polynomial for the d part because i want it to vanish and i can take e to the minus t so e to the minus t is a trivial part if we integrate it it's just going to give us minus plus so it's going to go like this and t to the n if i differentiate it, it it's going to give me n times t to the n minus one if i do it again n n minus one t to the n minus 2 so it's gonna go like this up to so if you notice uh, when I went up to n I have power n minus 1 so if I go up to 2 I'm gonna have power to the 1 so n n minus 1 if I went up to 2 I'm gonna have t and if I do it again n n minus 1 up to 2 times 1 so this is the last derivative because the next one is going to be zero. I can also write that. And these are just same. But for this ones, I actually don't know what are the signs. And we, we can actually find like, is it going to be minus one to the n or n plus one? Uh, actually, it's not necessary, but let's, let's just find it. Okay. Uh, so when I take zero, zero derivative, I took positive sign. Okay, and when I took one derivative, it was positive. So basically, if I put here n, okay, if I put here n, and if I take zero derivative, which is this one, so this is true, and if I put n is equal to one, this would indeed give me the first derivative, okay? And this is what I'm saying. This is the zero derivative. This is the first derivative, okay? So this is true if I differentiate it one more. So this is just e to the to the m plus one. And this is gonna be e to the minus t. t to the m plus two, I minus one to the m plus two is just my e to the minus one. e to the, e, minus one to the n, sorry. Okay, so well this wasn't necessary, it's just for a fantasy. Okay. Uh, so why it's not necessary? Because uh, with the tabular method we say I have plus, minus, plus, and it's going up like this. And if you look at here, so I'm, I'm going to do this cross multiplications. So t to the n times minus. And here I have minus times positive. Po positive times minus, minus times positive. So all of these terms are, are actually going to be negative. Okay, so I, I didn't need this part for this reason. Uh, so I can write it in e to the minus t actually i can also take minus before minus e to the minus t parenthesis okay 
So I'm writing it e to the minus t parentheses. So from the first term, I have t to the n. From the second term, n times t to the n minus 1. And I'm going to go up like this. So imagine this is a big parenthesis. Okay, I don't want to go to the down right hand side. Uh, I want to see here. So if I write this term, for example, it's going to be plus n, n minus 1, uh, going up to 2 times t. And the last term is going to be n times n minus 1 times 1. So let's just write this term basically m factorial. And the next term is zero. So all of these rest terms are just going to be zero. I don't need to write that. And so this is uh, a definite integral. So I have my bounds from infinity to zero. OK, cool. So well, this is one of the reasons why it's defined e to the minus t, not e to the t. Because now if I put infinity, e to the t is going to dominate all of these polynomials, OK? Uh, the, just just a quick note, limit of n goes to infinity, e to the minus t, so I'm, I'm going to write it at the denominator, t to the n over e to the minus t. If you just do n times derivative, this e to the minus t will never vanish, okay? So it will be either plus or minus. So this thing will always stay here and, sorry, so this is plus if I wrote it at the de denominator. So this thing will always be infinity, or it can be minus infinity, but in the end, this thing will just be zero, okay? So you, you can just do L'Hopital n times for any n, okay? Uh, so now, if I put infinity, this is going to be e to the minus t, so I can just write the, at the denominator, and it's going to dominate all of these polynomials. So it's going to give me zero from the first bound, okay? And if I put zero, so I'm putting t is equal to 0. So these are t values because I integrated with respect to t. So if I put t is equal to 0, it's going to give me... Uh, so I have minus and also 1 minus from the just uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. So it's going to be plus e to the 0, which is just 1. So I'm putting t is equal to 0. It's going to be 0 plus 0. All of these terms have at least one t. This term also has 1t, so all of these terms are going to be 0. This is also going to be 0 because I'm, I have a t, and except for this term. So all of these ones are 0, but this one is m factorial. It's just a constant, okay? And the next terms are also 0. So this is n factorial, and we are done. Look, so I started with gamma of n plus 1, and I evaluated, and I found n factorial. So this proves the first... Uh, property and so this is only true for integers because we can only define this factorial for integers okay so it doesn't make sense to say gamma of z plus 1 is z factorial but uh, so in general we can just use this property for factor for integers gamma of let's write gamma of n plus 1 so I'm doing so saying something about the second one gamma of n plus 1 would be so it's n factorial and i'm wondering is this really equal to z times gamma z which is n times so i put z is equal to n gamma of n gamma of n is going to be n minus 1 factorial and this is indeed n factorial so this is true for any n's of course but this is also saying me that this is true for any z's okay it's important we could prove this by only doing integration by parts one step, okay? We did it literally n steps. We did much harder, okay? So these are true, and this is also true. And uh, as I said in the beginning, I'm not going to prove this, but we can use this to find gamma of 1, one over 2. Uh, it's the main usage of it. Uh, you can also find, like, for example, if you, have, if you know what is gamma of 1 over 3, you can find gamma of 2 over 3. Uh, so... If I put z is equal to 1 over 2 here, so it's going to be gamma of 1 over 2 times gamma of 1 over 2. So it's going to be gamma of 1 over 2 squared being equal to, so I put z is equal to 1 over 2 pi over sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So it's just 1. 
So therefore, I can just take square root, root of both sides and gamma of 1 over 2 is equal to square root of pi. This is the most important value of gamma. We know all of, we know all of these all values of gamma for integers, but we don't know it for any fractions yet, except for gamma of 1 over 2, okay? And in general, it's not easy to calculate gamma values, okay? It's, for example, yeah, 1 over 2 is easy to calculate, but 1 over 3, you, you need different formulas, okay? So now let, let's do an example. It's normally, uh, so I'm going to evaluate the integral. Well, I'm not going to evaluate. Yeah, I'm going to find the, this definite integral e to the minus x squared dx. This is called Gaussian integral. Uh, like, it's really important uh, for statistics. And it's actually not easy to show this normally. You would need to know about polar coordinates. You would need to make it into double integrals. And with gamma function, you can you can easily find this, okay? So let, let's look at the gamma definition. I need e to the minus t, but here I have minus x squared. So I can just say, let, uh, sorry, I'm not gonna take the minus because I want to keep the minus. So let's make a substitution, x squared is equal to t. So I have, if I differentiate it, it's gonna be 2x dx is equal to dt. Well, I don't know what is x, I, I only want dx, so dx is going to be dt over 2x, and x is just square root of t from this part. So it's going to be dt over 2, and so this is square root of x, which is x to the 1 over 2, and since it's at the de denominator, I can say it's x to the, sorry, it's t to the minus 1 over 2. It's normally wrong to write dt with fractions, but we, we know what we are doing, okay? So we can say it's like this instead. So I'm just substituting this in. So if I put x is equal to 0, t is going to be 0. And if I put x is equal to infinity, t is infinity. So my bounds didn't really change. And so I have e to the minus t. And so dx is 1 over 2. Uh, let's take this 1 over 2 in front of the integral. I have t to the minus 1 over 2 dt. So this is, an, this is a gamma integral. Look, I have e to the minus t times t to the z minus 1. So this is gamma z. So instead of z minus 1, I have minus 1 over 2. So I'm saying z minus 1 is minus 1 over 2. So if I add 1 to both sides, I'm going to now find that z is equal to 1 over 2. So, and if you look again here, this is equal to gamma z. So this is indeed equal to, so I have 1 over 2, gamma of z, which is gamma of z is 1 over 2. We are done. We just found gamma of 1 over 2. This is, as I said, it's the most, most important value of gamma. And so, if I just put it in, it's going to be square root of pi over 2. And we can finish it here.